Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, today we're going to be checking out a technique that I really enjoy doing. It's actually a great sounding technique for acoustic guitar. It's cheap to pull off, and it's actually pretty easy to do. So that's a little bit about what this sounds like today. I discovered this technique when I was trying to film a, a whole song recorded with just SM57s. I was kind of simultaneously doing uh, the good mics right alongside the SM57s on everything in the recording. So kick, drum, snare, acoustic instruments, vocal, everything. Now when it came to this technique, I gave it a shot because the song had acoustic guitar in it. And the guy was like, you know, I actually like this better than the so-called good microphone. And I kind of fouled that away. And I think it's actually a really great technique. Of course, SM57s are not that expensive. So this is actually something you can pull out if you want a really big sound and a great sound at that. Uh, you have a couple 57s and you need to record acoustic guitar. So uh, the foundation for this technique is really getting two mics that are equidistant distant from the source of sound. I don't know exactly where the source of sound is because there's probably multiple points on an acoustic instrument. However, I think that over the past couple of years I've experimented and I think that perhaps the sound hole is the best place to measure from. And this is because the phase relationships most likely will affect the low end first. Of course, it affects other frequencies above that. Uh, it's, it can be very audible sometimes in those high frequencies. But here we want to make sure that that low end is really well intact and that both microphones reinforce that low end. So for this, we're going to measure from the sound hole. And as you can see here, I just take a guitar cable, I put my finger on the string, I measure up to the shoulder mic, and then I arc it down to the mic in the front. Again, this is just two SM57s and a really quick measurement, and we're good to go. Now, I know this looks kind of funny, but it really sounds great. Uh, your ears don't know what position the mics were arranged, and with just some simple panning, this is going to sound fantastic. So let's have a listen to each of these mics individually, and then we're gonna have a listen to the mics together, up the middle, in a mono mix. So here are the mics individually first. Okay, now we're going to have both mics together in a mono mix. Okay, so they actually work very nicely together. Uh, one mic has one part of the sound, the high end. The other mic out front has a lot more mid-range information. And put together, they actually add quite nicely. They create a pretty big guitar sound. I know that I've struggled a lot with small diaphragms with just trying to find just the right spot. And a lot of times it's kind of a balance of different types of tones coming from the instrument. And as we can see here, I just made a quick uh, placement of the over the shoulder mic and measured to find the placement of the mic out front. I really didn't put a lot of thought into this. So I really think that great acoustic sounds are really accessible with a technique like this. And of course, with 257s, it's really not that expensive. So finally, this is where the good stuff happens is let's pan this. Let's make this a stereo acoustic guitar. Now, I don't know exactly when I would use a stereo acoustic guitar. It's not that often, but 
if you're a solo instrumentalist and you do acoustic guitar music or uh, you want a really stripped down uh, arrangement and you have room for a really big acoustic guitar, well, this is a great technique to try. So here we're going to pan each of the mics, hard left, hard right, and have a listen to how it sounds. Yeah, that, that sounds great. I mean, I don't know why this works so well, but it just does. So, from here, I've always been kind of curious how different things compress. How do they work when you really put it to the test and really start to do some of the mixing processes? So I wanna go ahead and uh, use my Tegler Audio uh, Creme compressor. It's a VCA type compressor, and I find that it just works great on kind of bus situations, drum bus overheads, or stereo microphones like this. There's something about the way that compression glues these tracks together. And it also has a really nice top end boost. It's very, very smooth sounding. And I'm also gonna boost some of the lows. So let me play an example for you. And I'll start out with no compression, no EQ, and then I'll kick it in with some compression and then add some EQ. Little bit of top end boost, a little bit of bottom boost. I mean, you can really sculpt the sound into something very nice. It goes back to this concept of the mid range. The workhorse microphones are the ones that are going to give you good mid range. You don't want to have to mess with the mids using EQ. If you have a good mid range, then you can kind of sweeten and adjust the lows or the highs as needed. The workhorse microphones, such as a lot of ribbon mics, uh, 414, uh, SM7B, SM57, these are all mics that do a great job at just capturing a very kind of balanced sound. It may not be as exciting, but it does capture those mid frequencies very well. And here we're just kind of flavoring a little bit with a boost in the bottom, a boost in the top frequencies. So I'm really liking this sound, but let's experiment a little more. We're gonna start out with the sound that we arrived at in that last example, and then we'll kind of go back and forth between that example and a more compressed, aggressive, kind of squashed sound.
Now, you'll notice that uh, the phase relationship should be really strong. Uh, if I were to say, uh, take these two tracks and flip the polarity of one, you'll notice that the low end goes away quite a lot. And the more this low end goes away, the stronger relationship these two mics have. I'll give you an example. Yeah, so that is a very strong relationship. That means that when these two mics are added together, we're actually getting a really nice full low end. They're not fighting each other, they're working together. And we do that by kind of making them fight a little bit. We flip the polarity, and we know when the low end is canceled like this, we have a really good strong relationship. So I'd love to know what you think of this. Hopefully this is a technique that you get great sounds, it's easy to pull off, and it's relatively cheap to get the mics to do it. So I'll be hanging out in the comments below. Yeah.